South African scientists are still testing whether vaccines will be less effective against a COVID-19 variant that was first detected locally. And they're hoping for initial results within weeks. Professor Penny Moore has told the Reuters news agency that the National Institute of Communicable Diseases has now received samples from several local vaccine trials. She joins me now on Thursday lunchtime. Professor, good afternoon to you and welcome. Um, these tests then, how are they progressing? The tests are progressing well. Um, let me explain how, the, how, how this works, perhaps. Um, what we need to understand is whether um, samples from people who received the vaccine uh, show reduced um, efficacy against the new variant. And what we mean by that is whether the antibodies that were elicited by the vaccine recognize the new variant as well as they recognize the old variant. And to do that, what we need is to um, receive samples from people who received the various vac vaccine regimens. Um, there's been a concerted effort from um, scientists across South Africa to access those samples. Um, and we have now um, managed to obtain samples from many of those vaccines. And those tests are underway at the moment. Now, in, in your world, um, you, you approach things cautiously and methodically. In my world, we like speed and timelines. Um, do, do you have a sense as, as, as to when you will get a clearer picture about the efficacy? Yeah, we hope to have um, some sense um, within the next two weeks. But what we started to do um, in the interim is to understand what happens to people who've been infected with SARS-CoV-2, which is obviously the virus that causes COVID-19. We're asking the same questions in, in those samples. So there the question is slightly different. It's to understand whether, again, there's reduced sensitivity of the new variant to the antibodies that were elicited during infection. And that would have implications potentially for um, reinfection in the, in the community. And in, in many ways, the data that we obtained from those studies, which are also ongoing, um, is, is a sort of a cross-fertilization in the sense that it informs vaccine efficacy too. Could you give us a sense of how much of the rollout hinges on what you're doing? For instance, if the tests are not as successful as we all hope, how big a setback would that be? Yeah, so it's very important to, to understand that um, there's only a certain amount that we can learn from, from tests that happen in the, in the laboratory. So tests in the laboratory are indicative. We can understand from those whether in a test tube the new variant is less sensitive to neutralizing antibodies, which are just one arm of the immune system. This is a sort of a one-dimensional understanding, and, and vaccines don't work in a one-dimensional space. Um, the immune system has many arms to it, and neutralizing antibodies are just one. So it will give us a lot of information. It's important information, but there are many other studies ongoing at the moment to try to understand how the other arms of the immune system also contribute both to, to vaccine efficacy, in other words, how well a vaccine works, and also how these potentially are impacted by the new variant. So while this will give us um, some useful information, it's important also to understand that we, we don't know how much is enough for protection. So. We may um, observe in our studies that there's um, a reduction in the sensitivity of the virus to antibodies. But until we have really good clinical trials data, which uh, tells us exactly how much antibody is needed, for example, to protect people from infection, this is um, one piece of the jigsaw puzzle that needs to come together with um, other ongoing studies, including clinical trials. When we have all of that information together, then we'll be able to make a, a true assessment mm. of, of how well vaccines will work. But it's also important important to add that should vaccines um, be somewhat um, impacted by the new variant, um, we, we are, we've never um, claimed that vaccines are, are the magic bullet. Um, you know, we will always be implementing vaccines, particularly in South Africa, where the rollout um, is, is simply at the beginning stages now. We would always be uh, using vaccines as part of an integrated um, prevention package. And um, really, the bottom line is, as, as we continue to introduce vaccines and test vaccines and understand how well they work against the new variant, we need to continue with the old methods that we know mm. work well in preventing SARS-CoV-2 infection. They work just as well against the new variant as they worked against the old variant. And so we should continue wearing masks and we should continue washing our hands and social distancing as we've always advised people to do. I certainly accept the analogy of it not being a magic bullet, but you'll concede that it is probably the only or the most important bullet that we have in our armory right now. In the long term, vaccines will and have prevented many infectious diseases in the past. Um, there is, there is um, certainly a major contribution to make, be made from vaccines. And as, as they roll out and we increase what we refer to traditionally as herd immunity, 
they will certainly contribute enormously um, and probably will end up being the one way in which we eradicate um, for transmission of this, of this virus. But in the short term, regardless of how the vaccines um, are impacted by, by the new variant, we need to continue using vaccines as they're as they rolled out. As the previous speaker has mentioned, they'll be rolled out slowly in South Africa, first to healthcare workers and then to others. So, you know, we, we need to understand this, that this is happening, um, that this is happening as one way in which we tackle the virus. In the long term, yes, I absolutely agree. Vaccines mm. have, been, have been the way we've eradicated or um, eliminated pathogenicity, sickness, by many, many pathogens. And in the long term, yes, vaccines are the way to go, absolutely. Just finally, Professor Moore, give us a sense of trajectory. Let's assume in two weeks' time that the data that you have gathered is sufficient for you to make some sort of determination. What happens then? So, so there's a lot going on in this space at the moment in South Africa. South African scientists are working at, at so many levels that it's positively dizzying. Um, we will have, and there are many labs working on this question of whether neutralizing antibodies will be impacted by the new variant. In parallel, um, there are many tr clinical trials of several vaccines ongoing, and in the next few weeks, we'll also have information on how well those have worked. Those trials have been conducted in the face of the new variant, and that provides opportunities also to understand exactly how well those vaccines worked against the new variant as well as the old variant. In parallel, ongoing lab studies, and you know, all of these pieces of information will come together in the next um, few weeks and months to tell us um, exactly how efficacious those vaccines will be in South Africa and in the world. I know that you're a scientist and you're, you're far happier working with, uh, with data, but, and not necessarily the emotional side of this, but as someone who is involved really at the coalface. Could you give us a sense of the, of the urgency, of, of the excitement, the disappointment, the exhilaration uh, that you might be feeling on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's a complete roller coaster. You know, we, if you think back to the, the hype and the excitement about the fact that these vaccines were made faster than, faster than any other vaccine has ever been made, and think about how many vaccines are already being deployed in the field and think about the level of immunization that's happening in countries like Israel and in the UK. You know, this, we went from being despondent, um, perhaps, about this virus to seeing the development of vaccines with technologies that are going to change the way we deal with infectious diseases forever going forward. You know, they, the level of um, development of vaccines and the pace at which those vaccines have been developed is just completely remarkable. And that's meant that we've got a whole new series of platforms that we can use to tackle other viruses and, and other variants of SARS-CoV-2, if that is what nece is necessary. So we have the tools, and there was a level, I think, of euphoria um, when we watched those vaccines and the efficacy data coming in one after the other within a, a matter of months um, since the discovery of SARS-CoV-2. And I think, you know, the fears that, the fears and the alarm that um, surround the new variants, and there are many, um, to be clear, um, there are many of these variants emerging, have been a kind of a sobering wake-up call to the fact that um, what we thought was not a very movable target turns out to be much more movable potentially than we had anticipated. And so, for sure, um, identifying these variants across the world has um, somewhat tempered our, our excitement about the vaccine deployment. But until, until we actually know what the impact of these new variants are on vaccines, and on reinfection of people who've previously been infection, infected, then we just need to keep pushing forward with um, testing those mm -hmm. vaccines, understanding how well they'll work in South Africa, across the world, understanding that we're part of a, a global community and variants don't respect borders. Mm -hmm. And um, this virus is going to continue changing and we need to, as scientists, we need to be adaptable and nimble. And we have been as a community over the last few months. Um, we have been incredibly, um, adaptable in dealing with this and in sharing data. The way in which we've done science has just changed completely um, in the last 10 months. I've never seen the level of data sharing that is happening now, the level of sharing of reagents. Um, so so it, it might be an alarming time with much talk of new variants. But you know, the two important things are to remember, we don't actually know what the impact is of those variants yet. Um, and we do have vaccines in the field and we have the technology right. to deploy those vaccines. So, you know, it's, we've got to keep dealing with it the same way we have. Well, you're going to hate this final question. <laughs> on, on a scale of 1 to 10, 
because I know you like dealing in graphs. How optimistic are you right now? About vaccines? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm always going to be optimistic about vaccines. Vaccines are what saved millions and millions and millions of lives. If it turns out that this, these particular vaccines take a slight knock, then we will adapt and we will um, find better vaccines. Um, I'm always enthusiastic about vaccines. They've, they've changed the world we live in for the better.